Color jersey. Clear contrast to white and dark socks. Player B is part of the visiting team and is required to wear all white jersey and all white socks. Rule 411D allows for visible undergarments to be worn if they are of similar length and of, of solid color. <clears throat> Any undergarment worn by a player must be of a solid light color for the team members and of a similar length for individuals. Play pick A shows the whole team members wearing light color undergarments. Play pick B shows the visiting team wearing the all-white jersey and socks and blue shorts and tights. In A, illegal undergarments, if worn, must be of all solid light color. Play pick B is legal. If a player wears a sleeves on both arms, they must be of similar lengths on each arms, but they may be of a different length than a teammate's sleeves. Play pick C is illegal. Arm sleeves must be of a similar length. In play pick D, is legal. One compression sleeve may be worn. Rule 4210 is a new rule. It allows for state associations or delegate to permit the wearing of head coverings or wraps if criteria is met for medical, cosmetic, and or religious reasons. In play pick A and B, both items would be legal. In both A and B, wearing a head covering will require appropriate documentation showing state association approval to be allowed. Rule 812 allows the kicker on a kickoff to be in the opposing team's half of the field to make the kick. We no longer have to be in our own half of the field. The player taking the kickoff may be on the opposing team of the side, team side of the field to start the kickoff. All other players must be on the designated side of the field for their team. This obviously allows the team taking the kick to play the ball backwards. Rule 11.1.4 clarifies that a player in an offside position who becomes involved in active play must be penalized. In this play pick, A2 is in an offside position when A1 plays the ball. A2 runs from the offside position into her own half of the field to, and plays the ball. A2 is offside as she was in an offside position when the ball was played. The restart for the offside is an indirect free kick taken at the spot where A2 touches the ball. Rule 1281F15, 1282D3, and 1282D4 is new. It clarifies the penalty for a player who denies an obvious goal scoring opportunity. Play pick player B1, while attempting to play the ball, trips the attacking player A1 in the penalty box, denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. The referee awards the, the opponents a penalty kick and issues a caution to B1. Player B1 in this play pick, with no attempt to play the ball, trips the attacking player A1 inside the penalty box, denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. The referee awards the opponents a penalty kick and issues a card to B1. In this play pick, player B1 trips the attacking player A1 outside of the penalty box, denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. The referee awards the opponents a direct free kick and issues a red card to, to be won. Rule 13-2-1-J is a new rule. It provides for a penalty for a player's bench, uh, bench or coach personnel who enters or leaves the field without the permission from an official and interferes with play for an official. 13-2-1-J, a player, coach, or bench personnel enters or leaves the playing field without the permission of the official and interferes with play or an official shall be penalized with a direct free kick from the point of the infraction. 13-2-3, 
provides for a penalty for a player's coach or bench personnel who enters or leaves the field without permission from the official and does not interfere with play or the official. The referee should blow the play dead at the appropriate time and award an indirect free kick to the opposing team where the ball was when the referee stopped play. Rule 18.1G defines a deliberate act which provides guidance for interpretation of the rules that contain the word deliberate or the phrase deliberate act. In this play pick, a deliberate act is one in which a player chooses to act regardless of the outcome of that action. Below, we will go over the 2018-2019 NFHS soccer major editorial changes. Rule 424 clarifies that a religious medal or other religious items must be taped to the body. Players are allowed to tape to their bodies under the jersey religious symbols. Points of emphasis. Denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. The penalty associated with a player who denies an obvious goal scoring opportunity has been amended. In an effort to make the penalty better fit the infraction, now when a player commits an offense against an opponent within his or her own penalty area, which denies an obvious goal scoring opportunity and the referee awards a penalty kick, the offender is cautioned if the offense was an attempt to play the ball. Formerly, this player was disqualified and penalty kick was awarded. In circumstances where there was no attempt to play the ball, the player is still disqualified. In evaluating whether there has been an obvious goal scoring opportunity, officials are encouraged to consider the following. Distance between the offense and the goal. The offense must be near the goal. General direction of play. The attacking players are generally headed towards the goal. The likelihood of keeping or gaining control of the ball. The player must have or be able to get control of the ball in order to score. The location and number of defenders. Not more than one defender between the attacking player and the goal, not counting the player who committed the foul, and the defenders must be able to challenge the attacking player. If any of the above considerations are missing, it is not an obvious goal scoring opportunity. The penalty associated with a player who denies an obvious goal scoring opportunity has been amended. In an effort to make the penalty better fit the infraction, the player is that commits an offense against an opponent within their own penalty area, which denies an obvious goal scoring opportunity and the referee awards a penalty kick, the offender is cautioned if the offense was to att attempt to play the ball. It is still obviously a red card if there is no attempt to play the, the ball. Excessive player substitutions. <clears throat> a concern has been expressed in situations where teams make excessive substitutions toward the end of the game in an effort to waste time. According to Rule 3-6, a referee has the discretion to stop the clock during the substitution so that this time is not lost. Further, the referee may consider this unsporting conduct and a caution may be issued to the coach of the offending team. Again, we all need to be uh, uh, cognizant of this. Is, is, uh, this, this seems to happen um, in, in, in many of the games that uh, are, are very close uh, towards the end of the game here in Wyoming. Referee mechanics for an indirect free kick. When a team is awarded a free kick, it is important for the referee to correctly utilize the NFHS official soccer signals and properly signal so the teams know whether the kick is direct or indirect. This is especially important if the free kick is near the opponent's goal. For an indirect free kick, the referee must raise one arm vertically and maintain that position until the ball is touched by a second player. <clears throat> it is critical 
Players know what type of free kick is occurring so that the team taking the kick can properly execute the kick. And the team defending knows whether a goal may be scored directly from the kick. For indirect free kicks, if the ball enters the goal directly from the kick, the restart is a goal kick. Again, just showing the mechanics uh, for the free kicks. <clears throat> the next several slides are just going over the NFHS website. Um, they're, they're putting courses out there, uh, introduction to mechanics and techniques. Not all sports um, have everything. Um, I'd encourage you guys to take a look at the NFHS Learn website. Again, some of these slides we, we could have uh, deleted from the presentation. And this uh, will conclude the 2018-2019 uh, Soccer Rules Clinic.